that I typically see among black Hebrew Israelites is them saying that those aren't the real Hebrews because they don't acknowledge God right now. They don't acknowledge Yehoshua, right? What if I told you that's a sign that they are actually the real ones as a whole, the nation of Israel? How can I say that? Because Romans 11 and other places of scripture say that they will not be delivered until Jesus comes back. He's going to cause them as a whole nation to put away uncleanliness, right? Ty, don't you see the things that they're doing over there? The things that they're doing over there is likened to Sodom and Gomorrah. That's, that, that means that they're not the true ones. No, that actually coincides with prophecy. Because in the book of Revelation right here, it talks about that at the time of the end, they're going to be likened to Sodom. So I really want you to keep that in mind. Everything that black Hebrew Israelites try to use to disprove the nation of Israel actually proves that it's Israel according to scripture. Well, Ty, us black Hebrew Israelites, we believe in Yahushua. So that means we're the true Israel. True Israel doesn't believe in the Jesus as a whole until he comes back. That's Bible. So if any group is claiming to be the entirety of Israel, believing in Jesus right now or who they call Yahushua because they don't like the name Jesus. That's not really Israel because he hasn't come back yet. By them saying that, they're saying that Jesus has essentially returned and he hasn't returned yet. If any group is claiming to be the entirety of Israel, believing in Jesus right now or who they call Yahushua because they don't like the name Jesus, that's not really Israel. If any group is claiming to be the entirety of Israel, believing in Jesus right now or who they call Yahushua because they don't like the name Jesus. That's not really Israel. All the priests. So this individual that you saw in the video, but prior to this, is very suspect. All right, the dude goes by the name Ty Jackson. <laughs> He's weird beyond belief and he doesn't understand the Bible whatsoever. I want to say all praise to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And this video will be entitled Response. Hebrew Israelites contradict the Bible. All right. One thing you Christians better learn quick is that you don't know prophecy. You don't know the Bible, number one, and you don't know prophecy. And this dude right here is irritating. He's been making videos for a long time, talking his little trash. He doesn't understand the Bible whatsoever. So we're going to go into a quick lesson dealing with some of his madness that he was talking about. You heard the video from the beginning. Now, the first thing I want to deal with is he brought up Revelation 11 and 8. <clears throat> and he's saying the fact that the people over there in the Holy Land don't believe in Jesus, as he said, as a whole. And the things they're doing in the land proves that they are the Israelites because of Revelation 11 and 8. Well, Revelation 11 and 8 is not talking about the Israelites being in the Holy Land. All right, let's look at it. There's a key phrase in there I want you to see. This is Revelation 11 and 8. It says, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. What is the great city? The great city is not talking about in the Holy Land. It's not talking about Jerusalem, the physical city. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Just because it says where our Lord was crucified, you got to look at, you can't think that that's talking about the Holy Land, right? Because you read on, it says, and the people, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. This is figurative language. This is, you know, it's not literal. Now, going back to verse eight, because look, if, if that was talking about Jerusalem, what nation is going to see the dead bodies of, of the people that are supposed to be the Israelites and not suffering to be put in graves? It's not even speaking of a physical death. It's talking about the nation selling the Israelites into captivity. Right. Giving gifts one to another and not suffering their bodies to be put in graves, meaning what? They wouldn't uh, tell the Israelites who they were. Now, when you read in Revelation 11 and 8 again, and they're dead bodies. And what is the dead bodies? It's the spiritually dead. It doesn't mean literally dead. It means not knowing their heritage. 
and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. To prove what we're telling you, Ezekiel 37 is written in allegorical form and is called what? The vision of the valley of dry bones. These are these same dead bodies of people that are spiritually not awakened. They don't know who they are. So that can't possibly be talking about the people in the Holy Land. They supposed to know who they are. You see? You see, because even when you go into Revelation 11, I'm sorry, Revelation, uh, Ezekiel 37, excuse me. Ezekiel 37, right? If you look at verse 12 or verse 11, then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus said the Lord Power, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Right? But it doesn't happen right away. When the Most High is bringing us up out of our graves, meaning he's bringing us back on our feet. He's giving us the knowledge back of who we are. And then at a particular time, when his son comes, then we go back to the land. We'll cover that in a few minutes. It goes on, and ye shall know that I, the Lord, Salakia, and ye shall know that I am the Lord, when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. See, so when the Lord puts his spirit in us, we become alive. See, it's not literally talking about dead bodies in Revelation 11. Even when you read on down to verse 9, 11 to 8 and 9, it's talking about a spiritual awakening that's going to happen to a people that did not know they were the Israelites. Everything comes in stages. And shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your land. Then shall ye know that, the, that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, said the Lord. So the whole book of Ezekiel 37 it's all about that awakening of the Israelites. As a matter of fact, when you read further down, it goes into the 12 tribe sign. You see? So showing you that there was had to be a spiritual awakening of the Israelites. That's what it's going into. Being spiritually dead is not knowing who you are as a people. This is what the nations did not do in verse 9. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. And shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Well, what did the Most High say? He's going to bring us up out of those graves. He's going to put the, his spirit within us. And we're going to know who we are. You see? As a matter of fact. um, In that same three days and a half. Right? Revelation 11 and 11. And after three days and a half. The spirit of life from the Most High entered into them. See that? So the Most High said he was going to. Make us rise to our feet. He was going to put his spirit within us. That's the great awakening. What you see happening now, which is why people like Ty Jackson are coming with all this madness, trying to try, thinking you can stop it. You can't stop us from waking up, dude. N nigga with blonde dreads going off two going off two ways. First, blonde hair is going off. Secondly, a man with long hair is going off. And thirdly, dreadlocks is going off. That's a triple sin. Long hair. Right? Which men should not have long hair. Thus said the scriptures. Blonde hair, which is leprosy of the damn scalp. And then having dreadlocks, which is a heathenistic custom, which is uh, uh, done in worship to the false goddess Shiva, the Hindu goddess Shiva, because dreadlocks are Shiva Jatas. That's a triple sin on your head. Then you got a tattoo, thinking you got the Most High name on your damn neck when the Lord said, don't get tattoos. Did you not know that the Most High cannot be honored with sin? Did you, you didn't know that? But you know all these deep mysteries. Yeah, get out of the way, man. Dude don't know what's going on. So this is the great awakening starting in verse 8. The dead bodies of the Israelites not knowing who they were. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. What is the great city? Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt where also our Lord was crucified. The great city is not talking about Israel. He tried to apply this to the land of Israel now, saying that the people over there doing wickedness and then you, you and you're lying. You saying the Israelites teach that. Look at the things they doing over there prove that they're not the Israelites. Well, look at look at the Israelites in America, the things they're doing over here. You see, they're doing wickedness, but we don't use that. 
We don't use the unbelief. We use the belief to prove, part of, partially to prove that we are the Israelites. But is Revelation 11 and 8 talking about the land of Jerusalem? Because people get messed up because it says, well, also our Lord was crucified. But you need to look no further than this, this phrase, the great city. What is the great city in the book of Revelation? It's not Jerusalem. Let's go there. And we got several uh, entries to bring up on that. Revelation 14 and 8. Now, we know that uh, Nineveh was called a great city, right? But we tell you that what America is spiritual Sodom, Egypt, Nineveh, right? It's all these different things rolled into one. Spiritual Egypt, Sodom, and Gomorrah, spiritual Nineveh, spiritually Rome. It's talking about Babylon the Great. And Babylon the Great is talking about America. Babylon the Great is not the Holy Land. Revelation 14 and 8, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Did Jerusalem make all nations drink of the wine of her wrath? No. Verse uh, Revelation 17 and 18, and the woman which thou sawest is that great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Who reigns over the kings of the earth? Is it Jerusalem or is it America Babylon the Great? It's America, which is Babylon the Great, that great city. Revelation 18 and 10, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And when you read in the scriptures, the Israelites are supposed to be avenged on Babylon the Great. So you mean to tell us, Ty Jackson, that if the great city is Jerusalem, that means that it's going to be destroyed. The Israelites can get saved out of Babylon and taken back to their land. So if they're already in the land, how can they be saved out of the land and taken back to the land? It doesn't even make sense. Because it's not talking about the great city. It's not speaking of Jerusalem. It's talking about another place where the Israelites are in captivity, which also... It's going to help us prove that the people over there down the land are not Israelites. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is that judgment come. Revelation 18 and 6. I mean, you can go that go on that way for a long time. And when we re read Revelation 18 and 20, it says what I just got finished saying. The Israelites will be avenged on Babylon the Great. Because when you read in Revelation 18, when you start up at the top, it says Babylon is fallen, right? Verse 2, and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Where is this place Babylon? It's none other than America. Babylon the Great. Now, when you go to Revelation 18 and 20, so we know that it's talking about Babylon the Great. It says, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for the most I have avenged you on her. This is the same place, the great city, right? The same great city being spoken of in Revelation 11 and 8. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone. And cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. So the holy apostles and prophets and the kingdom of heaven, which is the Israelites, are going to be avenged on this place. So wait a minute. Ty Jackson wants you to believe that in Revelation 11 and 8, that great city is talking about Jerusalem because he said it. But that's not. He didn't say it in those words, but he said that all the things they're doing over there. He used that verse to try to say that the Lord said the Israelites would be like Sodom and Gomorrah in the last days. Right? That the land over there would be like Sodom and Gomorrah. But he was going off. Because that verse wasn't dealing with over there in the Holy Land. It was dealing with another place. So according to him, and according to the scriptures, if the Holy Land is is uh, what Revelation 11 and 8 is talking about, that would mean that the Most High would have to avenge the Israelites on the Holy Land. And that's stupid. That doesn't make sense. See it? Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for the most I have avenged you on her. And the mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. See? 
So it's going to be completely destroyed. And this place is not going to be found anymore at all. So that couldn't possibly be talking about the Holy Land because the Israelites are supposed to return to that land. How are they going to return to a land? First off, how are they going to be avenged on their own? Uh, they're going to, their blood is going to be avenged on a land. It's their own land. It's going to be destroyed and never found anymore at all. Then what are they going to rule over? What are they, what are they going to rule from? That doesn't make sense. So Ty Jackson was wrong on that. Completely damn wrong. Cause he's bugged out, a bugged out weirdo. And he, he just doesn't understand the Bible. Now, the second point we want to deal with, this dude said that, um, uh, Revelation 11, if any group, he said, if any group it, as a whole is saying that they believe in the savior, then they're not the Israelites because all the Israelites are supposed to believe to the savior returns. That's a damn lie. First off, we don't teach that all Israel as a group believes in the savior because no hey the lord only dealing with his elect for number one and he says that in, in romans 11 he's only dealing with his elect romans 11 verse 1 i say then hath the most high cast away his people and he also said that true israel would not be believing in the savior which is completely dumb it's completely dumb did what then nobody's gonna believe in the savior no his true people will believe in him his elect his chosen will believe in him matter of fact let's go there let's go there first Rep, uh john 17 and we're going to start at verse 6 he says i have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world who are the men that the lord the heavenly father gave you how a shot out of the world first well it's called the elect first his 12 disciples and then that would extend to 12,000 from each tribe, would it not? That's who the elect are, and also one third of all Israelites in Babylon the Great. That's the elect, the chosen. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. All Israel ain't gonna believe in the, in the Savior until we get into the kingdom of heaven. But on this side, there will be a remnant that does believe in the Savior. That does believe in the, in the heavenly father and his word. This is Isaiah 1 verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. We should have been as Sodom and we should have been likened to Gomorrah. Right. We would have been completely destroyed if the Lord had not left us a remnant. Now in Revelation, I'm sorry, in John 17 and 6, he says, I have manifested thy name unto the men. Which thou gavest me out of the world, the elect, the same remnant. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. So we never said that all Israel gonna believe in the Lord. Only the chosen. That's why we constantly preach that only the elect is gonna get this truth. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them who did the they the elect and have known surely that i came out from thee and they have believed have believed that thou didst send me so the elect is gonna believe in the savior what are you talking about i pray for them i pray not for the world but for them which thou hast given me for they are thine who did the most High give to you how was shot those that are in his hand right the elect let's see here Shall no man pluck. Oh, just bear with me, brothers. Out of a father's hand. This is John 10, 29. We'll start at verse 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. You see that? So those that don't believe, they're not the father's sheep. Let's, let's go up a little bit. Um, John 10, 25. Yeah, how wish I answer them? I told you and ye believe not. Those that don't believe in the Savior, even if they are his people, they're not the, the chosen. They're not the elect on this side. The works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. 
my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Who's going to follow the Savior? The elect. See that? The chosen. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. See that? So that's the chosen. That's the elect. They are the ones that will believe. And those that believe, the Savior said it. There are going to be certain signs that follow them that believe. And you can see it now. So I want to read a little more. John 17 and 11, it says, And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep them through thine own name. Those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. Now, at that time, it was Judas Iscariot. But you had another elect. I mean, the rest of the elect, right? Now, in verse 25, he says, um, just bear with me here. Yeah. O righteous father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou has sent me and I have declared unto them thy name and will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them so the Savior said the world ain't gonna believe in in all of this right they're not gonna believe in me but my elect will believe those who the father gave it to his hand so Ty Jackson you straight you stay going off you're trying to make something out of nothing and these these Christians try to be clever you're trying to use scriptures that we use to prove that we are the Israelites or prove something else, you're trying to use them to disprove what we teach. You, you're not going to be able to do it. As you find out with Revelation 11, that was a stupid move. And then you mentioned Romans 11. But we first, we're going to read this John 14. Um, And just bear with me here. Just bear with me here while I bring this, this scripture up. Yeah. So this is... And this is further proof that all Israel is not going to receive the spirit of truth, nor believe in the Savior. And we never taught that as a whole group, the Israelites going to believe in the Lord. John 14, 16, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. See, so everybody in the world on the planet, they can't receive the spirit of truth. Neither can all the Israelites, even if we go to this. This word world is cosmos, same as in John 3, 16. So really it's talking about the world of Israel. So not all Israelites going to even believe in the Father. An apt and harmonious arrangement, a constitution, order, government, which is what? The Israelites. So when the Savior says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, that world is the world of Israel. So all the Israelites can't receive the spirit of truth. So we don't even teach that they all going as a whole going to receive the the, uh, the the Savior. Are they going to believe in the Savior? So that's a, a moot point. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. There you go. So there's only going to be a chosen elect that believe in the Savior. Now, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Here it is, Romans 11 and 1. I say then, hath the Most High cast away his people? Yahweh forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. The Most High hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to the Most High against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what said the answer of the Most High unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men, which have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. What does this mean? Number one, this was um, a repeat of what happened in the time of Elijah. Elijah hid in the cave. The Most High came to Elijah. Why you hide in the cave? Elijah thought he was the last one left. But the Lord said, no, I have reserved to myself 7,000 men which have not bowed a knee to 
to the image of Baal. In our time now, the seven represents what? A complete number, which is the elect of men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal, meaning they don't worship other gods and idols. They don't belong to them. They belong to the heavenly father. That's the same remnant. He says right here in verse five, even so then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. So that remnant is the elect. According to the election of grace, that same remnant we read about in uh, in uh, Isaiah 1 and 9. So Ty Jackson is steadily lying, saying that we teaching the whole group, everybody going to believe in the Lord. No, they're not. Only the elect is going to believe in the Lord. And if by grace, then it is, is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then Israel has not obtained that which he's seeking for. All the Israelites can't get this. Even the Savior told you that. Right? The world cannot receive this. But the election hath obtained it and the rest were blinded. So only the elect out of the Israelites even going to receive this truth and the rest of the Israelites are blinded. So you was right on the point that not all Israelites going to gonna believe in the law but you was wrong and trying to put it on number one trying to put it on those people over there in the holy land you basically try to make a call make a case that they ain't none of them gonna believe no that's stupid the lord ain't gonna save a people that don't believe in him he's gonna save his elect as a matter of fact let's show you that he will save his elect he that's all he's gonna save we're gonna go now to isaiah 10 and verse 20 it says, and it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel, what's the remnant? The elect. And such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel in truth. So there will be a remnant that believes in the Lord. They're no longer going to stay on, meaning rely on the oppressor, which in our case is Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, but shall stay upon rely on the lord the holy one of israel in truth so they're going to get the truth and believe it which is why you have a great awakening the remnant shall return even the remnant of jacob unto the mighty god that's a cut ty jackson you said that none of the people true israel wasn't going to believe in the lord on, as a whole well we never said that they would we said that the elect is going to believe in the lord that's what we say and they, and, they, and they're not over there in the holy land now the remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. A remnant. The consumption decree shall overflow with righteousness. The consumption is the nuclear destruction of Babylon, that great city. Revelation 11 and 8. Revelation 18, we talked about. It's not talking about the Holy Land. For the Lord of hosts, for the Lord power or God of hosts shall make a consumption even determined in the midst of all the land. Right. And why is the Lord going to make a, a consumption in the midst of all the land? As punishment to pay back those, right, that, um, those that, uh, that, uh, persecuted the Israelites. Excuse me. You see? So the last thing we're going to discuss, so Ty Jackson was completely off on all his points and then, and Thirdly, or now, I want to offer another prophecy that this, this uh, bug out doesn't understand. You going on and on about the people over in the Holy Land, they're going to be in the land. not And nobody believes in the Savior, but he's going to come and save them. What's he going to come and save them from? If they're already in the land, they're not supposed to be there. You talk about prophecy. Well, do you understand the prophecy that the Israelites will stay scattered until... This these nations fall. Did you understand that? No, you didn't understand it because you're too busy talking. Revelation 21, right? And I'm gonna start at verse uh I start at 23, right? I start at uh I start at 20. Now, this is speaking of the time around about 70 AD, right? Starting with but in the end, he gives a prophecy saying that the Israelites will stay scattered. When they leave and get scattered, they're never going to return to the Holy Land until he comes back and he's going to take them home. 
Luke 21 and 20, when you shall see Jerusalem compass with armies, <coughs> excuse me, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. That's 70 AD. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter there in two. For these be the days of vengeance that all things that are which are written may be fulfilled. And we know that when that happened, many Israelites died, but others ran into the interiors of Africa and other surrounding lands, right? A portion, portions of them. Then others were sold into captivity. Let's read it. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them they give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And let me add to that. These lands that Israelites, especially when they fled into the interiors of Africa, they were rounded up later on and sold into slavery. He says, But woe unto them that are with child, and to them they give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. What people? On the Israelites. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Right? When they, when they got besieged, they fell by the edge of the sword. And shall be led away captive into all nations. They got sold into slavery. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of of the Gentiles be fulfilled. You see that? So they're going to stay scattered until the Savior finally comes and sets up a kingdom. When you go to Daniel chapter 2, the times of the Gentiles is laid out in four major empires. And the Israelites were not prophesied. Since you know prophecy is so good, Ty Jackson, which you really don't, me being sarcastic. Those four major empires are, are, are prophesied to rule until the Savior comes back and takes them down. This is uh, the first kingdom was Babylon, ancient Babylon. The second was Medo-Persia. The third was Greece. And the fourth was Rome. And we're still in the Roman Empire because in the Roman Empire is where the Lord comes. Right? Because the divine kingdom comes right after that. So where are we? Are we in the divine kingdom? The answer is no. Because when you read it, Daniel 2.44, and in the days of these kings... Shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Right. When the Savior comes, he's going to break down all these kingdoms, empires, and he's going to take his people home. So there's no way in hell possible that the people over there now in the Holy Land are the Israelites unless we're in the kingdom of heaven already. And if we're in the kingdom of heaven, where's the Savior at? Why are there still trannies? Why are there still all types of killing and murder? And, and, and Armageddon haven't even came yet. See, this dude is a fool. He doesn't understand the Bible. He don't know what's going on. All he's doing is just trying to throw stumbling blocks to keep you from believing that we're the Israelites. He's trying to prop these devils up. They ain't even supposed to, The real Israelites are not even supposed to be in the Holy Land right now. They're not even supposed to be there. As a matter of fact, let's go there now. And read the prophecy of the Lord coming back and taking his people back to the land. Because they're supposed to be pursuing. Let's go first, let's go back to Luke. The times of the Gentiles of these empires ending with Rome. Sure, Rome was in power when the Lord was on the scene, but it never fell. Right? It fell for a period of time, but then it came back in a reincarnated fashion, revived. Today you have NATO and the EU in America, Babylon the Great. Right, the great city that ruled, reigneth over the kings of the earth. That's Babylon the Great, which is all together the Roman Empire. And you're still in Rome now. Luke 21, 24. Are you still in the Roman Empire, should I say? You're in that last leg of the Roman Empire. The, the uh, defeat. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, Luke 21, 24, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And then when the, when the times of the Gentiles fulfilled, what happens? The God of heaven says, set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. We just read it in Daniel chapter 2. Matter of fact, Revelation 11 and 15. Because you, you read Revelation 11 and 8. Broke it down wrong. This is Revelation 11 and 15. And the seventh angel sounded. Seven meaning completion. The end. And there, and there were great voices in heaven 
saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kings of our Lord and of his anointed, and he shall reign forever and ever. That's the same as Daniel 2, 44. The God of heaven shall set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. That ends the times of the Gentiles. Why are we over here in Revelation reading about that? Because that ends the Roman Empire, right? Which is the great, um, that great beast that has seven heads and ten, and ten horns. You see? That's the same beast as the Roman Empire is what it is. So it hasn't failed yet. So when the Lord comes, he's going to take down these kingdoms. And then what's he going to do? Dog on it. Then he's going to take his people home from all lands where they, where they were scattered. Thus fulfilling the prophecy that we read about in Luke 21. Right? This is Jeremiah 23. Let's go to it. Jeremiah 23 and 5. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, a king from the house of David, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Has this happened yet? No. In his days, Judah shall be saved. That the Jews, in his days, when he comes, he's going to save the Jews. And Israel, the ten tribes, shall dwell safely, the Israelites. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. Then what's he going to do? Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, that they shall no more say the Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel. What? But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel the true Israelites out of the north country and from all countries, whether I had driven them and they shall dwell in their own land. So when the Savior comes, then he takes his people home, the seed of the house of Israel from all countries. Why do you have people in the Holy Land now, Ty Jackson, claiming that they're Judah, right? And claiming that they're Israel. Why are they there? The Savior ain't here. How did they get there? We just read a clear-cut prophecy that when the Savior comes, he's going to take down the nations and take his people home. Because you don't understand nothing, Batiman, blinded dread. You don't understand, man, because you're wicked and you're a demon. Jeremiah 3.17, at that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. And all nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord to Jerusalem. Is that happening now? No. Neither shall they walk anymore after the imagination of their evil heart. That's another cut. Because this dude just made a case saying because they're so wicked over there, that proves they're the true Israelites. Nope, wrong. Wrong, wrong. When the Israelites go home, they're going to be completely righteous. The Savior's going to be here. The empires of the world would have fallen. Armageddon would have happened. you so off. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all nations shall be gathered unto it. To the name of the Lord to Jerusalem, neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. How is that going to happen? Because they're going to get new bodies. They're going to be under the new covenant. They're going to be immortals, not even capable of committing a sin. That ain't now. In those days, in those days, when they're no more longer sinning, when they go home, in those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. It's going to be all 12 tribes together. And... They shall come together. Where from? Are they going to be already in the land when the Savior comes? No. He's going to come and take them home. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. And they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. And that's a cold, cold cut on you, Ty Jackson. You're completely done. So when the Savior comes, he this nigga said that. The Israelites not going to believe until the Savior till he comes. His people ain't going to believe in him. He going to come. You're already in the land. No, not true. The elect is going to believe in the Lord and he's going to save them from all countries where they dwell. And he's going to take them literally his own self. He's going to take down the nations and take his people home. That's it. You fucked up, Ty Jackson, because you don't know the Bible, man. But it's all good. For those that will listen, you can clearly see this guy don't know what the hell is going on. 
He's bugged out for more reasons than I named. There's even more reasons. And this dude might be paid off, but it don't matter. Even if he's not paid out, he's just a bugged out Christian. Blonde dreads, long hair, tattoo on his neck, tripping. That's it, brothers. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.